Let us now take a short quiz to test our understanding. So far. First, a company provides you the following information. Equity share capital, 50 lakhs. Calls in advance, 2 lakh 50 thousand. Calls in areas is 1 lakh. The amount of paid up capital to be shown in the balance sheet of A Limited will be A, 51 lakh 50 thousand. B, 46 lakh 50 thousand. C, 49 lakh. And D, 48 lakh 50 thousand. Equity share capital is 50 lakh. Calls in advance is not a part of share capital. Calls in areas, let us reduce the 1 lakh. Therefore, 49 lakh should be the amount of paid up capital as disclosed in the balance sheet. Correct answer should be C, 49 lakh. That is, Called up capital, less calls in areas, 1 lakh. Calls in advance do not form a part of share capital. Next, premium received on issue of shares are shown under the head, dash in the balance sheet, reserves in surplus, B, current liabilities and provisions, C, share capital, D, contingent liabilities. Premium received on issue of shares. When a rupees 10 share is issued, it could be issued at rupees 12 or rupees 15 or any other value. When it is issued at a higher value, this difference between the face value and the issue price, this profit is called premium, securities premium. This is a profit. It's a profit in the, it's a capital profit. It's a capital profit and it is therefore shown under reserves and surplus. So securities premium is an item of capital profit and it appears in reserves and surplus. The correct answer should be A. <coughs> securities premium is shown under the head reserves and surplus in the balance sheet. Equity shareholders have a right to A. Quote B, 20% dividend. C, have preference redemption. D, all of the above. Equity shareholders have a right to vote. A, there is no fixed dividend for equity shareholders. They do not have any preference redemption. And therefore, B, C or D would not be applicable. A, equity shareholders have a right to vote would be the correct answer. Next. <clears throat> The reserve which is created for a particular purpose and which is a charge against revenue is called A. Capital Reserve, B. General Reserve, C. Secret Reserve and D. Specific Reserve. A reserve which is created for a particular purpose is a specific reserve and it is a charge against revenue. It's called a specific reserve. So our revenue reserve could be general reserve or could be specific reserve. General reserve or specific reserve. So the reserve which is created for a particular purpose and is a charge against revenue is called a specific reserve. The correct answer is D. Next, proposed dividends is shown in the balance sheet of a company under the head A. Provisions, B. Reserves and surplus, C. Current liabilities and D. Other liabilities. Proposed dividend. It has only been proposed. It has not yet become a liability and therefore it is shown under provisions. Correct answer should be A. Proposed dividend is shown under provisions in the balance sheet. Equity shareholders are dash of a company. Equity shareholders are A. Bankers. Equity shareholders are B. Creditors. Equity shareholders are C. Debtors. Equity shareholders are D. Owners of a company. 
equity shareholders are owners of a company therefore correct answer should be d <clears throat> the part of share capital which can be called up only on the winding up of a company is called a authorized capital b called up capital c capital reserve and d reserve capital the part of share capital which can be called up only on the winding up of a company is called reserve capital authorized capital is the capital with which it is registered called up is what has already been called up capital reserve is not capital it is a profit it's a capital profit a profit which has been earned not by the ordinary business activities of the company and the reserve capital is that part of the capital which can be called up only on winding up of a company so the correct answer is d next the amount of capital that is mentioned in the capital clause is known as a authorized capital b registered capital c nominal capital d all of these the capital clause appears in what is called the memorandum of association this is called authorized capital it is also called registered capital it is also called nominal capital all this is one and same and therefore the answer should be d all of these next dividends are usually paid on a authorized capital b issued capital c called up capital d paid up capital dividends are usually they are paid up on the are paid on the paid up capital answer should be d dividends are usually paid on paid up capital following are the information related to g limited equity share capital 285000 for equity share capital paid up 285000 calls in advance 10000 calls in arrears 15000 proposed dividend 20% the amount of dividend payable a 57000 b 54000 c 56000 and d 60000 <clears throat> the amount of dividend payable dividend we just discussed is paid on the paid up capital so what is the paid up capital equity share paid up capital is 285000 so it's 285000 into 20% 57000 should be the correct answer therefore the correct answer is Fifty-seven thousand eight. Fifty-seven thousand. The correct answer is fifty-seven thousand. Mind you, the catch here is that the equity share capital paid up is already given. Called up capital minus calls in arrears is the paid up capital which is already given, and dividend would be payable on that. we need not deduct calls in arrears further calls in advance is of course not a part of capital at all <clears throat> the difference between subscribed capital and called up capital is called a calls in arrears b calls in advance c uncalled capital d none of the above difference between subscribed capital and called up capital subscribed and called up correct answer should be c uncalled capital subscribed capital is shown at the nominal value per share called up capital is the actual called up value per share therefore the correct answer difference between subscribed capital and called up capital is called uncalled capital 